Welcome back to AA TV. I'm your host Tom Anvil Hibbert and today we're going to have a look at weathering this peck box. I recently posted some pictures of my peck on my L119A2 which I've recently just done a bit of weathering to to make it look a fair bit more distressed compared to this one. So I'll just go through very quickly what I did. Super simple using very readily available products. I'm not normally into artificially weathering stuff. I tend to like it just picking up patina from playing with it. In this case, I think the plastics will take a lot longer. I think using this process, and it's not really complicated at all, gives a really nice effect. Okay, so what we're gonna use primarily is this, which is a paint from Citadel, which is a Games Workshop. And it's a Citadel shade called Agrax Earthshade. So this product is developed for miniature painting, Toy Soldiers, and here's one I did recently. And it's designed to flow into the recesses and low points of the miniature and give it some shade and some depth. It's called Liquid Skill, or nicknamed Liquid Skill in the miniature painting community because it makes pretty much makes everything look better straight away for really no effort. Um, easily available in Warhammer or Games Workshop shops or online all over the place. So you will need some sort of palette. It can just be a white tile. I'm just using this old plate. So if we, when you first get this, give it a really good shape before you use it for about a minute. It's full of different chemicals and agents to make it flow properly and matte. Give a matte finish rather than a glossy finish, so they need to mix up. I'm using a, an old Games Workshop brush. You can use pretty much use anything, any old craft brush. We don't need to be too precise. We don't need a particularly good brush. And I tend to find it helps if you move it some onto the, your palette. It gives you better control over how much you're using rather than painting directly from the pot. The other thing you might want is a kitchen towel or a rag in order to wipe any excess off. So, so I'm going to put a coat on. So focus on your low areas. Don't worry too much about putting too much on at the moment. It can look quite messy. We're going to take this off later. Now it's designed to pull into the recesses, so it will pull itself into recesses of the way the surface tension on the product works. So we're just going to focus on all of the cracks, low areas, edges. And it will take some time to dry, so you don't don't panic. Take, you know, you don't take forever, but you, you have quite a lot of working time with this. You can move it around again. If, you, if it pulls, you get too much in one place. So, for example, we put tons on here, and you don't want tons in here. What you need to do is to either clean your brush off on your tissue, or just come in, and you can just lift it off with your brush. So you're lifting it back off again, getting it away from the areas you don't want it. So don't panic if you put too much on. Not a problem at all. The traditional way of doing this is with oil paints and thinners, this is a lot cleaner, dries a lot faster. What you do want to do is when you pick a surface, just keep going. Otherwise you can get tide marks where, where it dries. So this is acrylic based, it's not, sol it's not solvent based. So it won't very unlikely to do any damage to your pack box or anything along those lines. Again, we're just painting into all the places where dirt might gather. So that's the first step, we've got it all on. You're going to clean your brush off in some water. Take the rag or your cloth and wipe it across the surface. Yes. Don't have to wipe. You obviously don't wipe. Pull it off. You want to leave some in the re in the recesses. You see, we've got a few of these little tide marks. What you can do is using a bit of water. Start scrubbing off 
As simple as that, really. It's a bit of finagling. So I'm just going to let that dry. And it's dried. There you go. So suitably grim and manky without really any trouble at all, just using this Angrax Earth Shade. If you do find you don't like a certain bit, uh, literally a damp thumb or a damp paintbrush. You can go in and just clean the surface off a bit, bit of a scrub and you'll knock it back. You can even just use a damp thumb. Take it off. There you go. I think that's a really great, really simple, really easy way of distressing or weathering some of the plastic components on your airsoft gun. So here's another application for Angrax Earthshade and your airsoft replicas. This is a PTS EPM and I run some Angrax Earthshade into the cracks between these fake cartridges inside the magazine and I've added a little bit onto the exterior to weather it up a bit and this is what an EPM looks like completely standing. You can see they're just a bit too shiny and you can see into the gaps between the cartridges. This just makes the whole magazine look a bit more used, a bit more weathered and the cartridge case is a lot less shiny. So let me show you how I did this. Okay, first things first, get some tape, put this over these little plastic windows to make sure they don't fall out. Okay. Move this screw. And then these go up. Don't try not to put any pressure on these windows. I'll just leave them attached. Dress these. Now these are very slightly curved, so they're not, they will go onto only one side. And they sit in these little recesses here. And this is super simple really. When you're, again, when you're working with these, give it a shake for at least 30 seconds. There's a lot of different chemicals and matting agents and anti-gloss stuff and anti-bubbling agents and it all needs a good mix. Speaking from experience, if you don't shake them, you can have some problems. Use my old palette plate to control the amount I have on the brush. And we're literally just going to drop it into the corners. It can be quite rough, it will just flow in. Okay, so we're just going to keep an eye on this for, as it dries for a little bit. If you, have, if you think you've got too much on, in one area, what you can do is take some of the stuff off and then you can just lift it off with a brush. Conversely, if you think you don't have enough, just go back in and add a bit more. But everyone needs to be behind a little window inside a magazine so you can probably have the effect a bit harsher than you would do if it was exposed. Okay, and okay, let's dry for a bit. Okay. Okay, and we're back. So these are dried. We're just going to reassemble and let me show you. Close that up. Bit more contrast in the recesses. Just make these a little bit more realistic. So these only assemble one way. Let's go again. Take off. I think it looks great. And another really useful application for Agrax Earthshade. If you wanted to, you can paint the recesses of the magazine shell itself, like we did with the PEC 15, and make it look a bit aged. So, liquid skill available from all your local hobby shops. Super easy to use, highly recommended. Thanks for watching. I've been Tom. Ample Hibbard for AATV. Please like, subscribe, ding that bell, receive notifications whenever we go live 
or whenever we publish a new video. I'd like to thank all of my Patreons for supporting the channel. This couldn't carry on doing this project without you guys. Thank you so much for being there for me. Most importantly, stay safe and we'll see you soon.